All right. So, uh, you know, AI is changing the world, right? I mean, it's everywhere these days. But this story we're diving into today, it's like next level AI stuff. And it's already causing some serious international tension. AI on warships. Yeah, it's pretty wild stuff. And this encounter that happened recently in the South China Sea, I mean, it's got everybody talking. A face-off between a Chinese destroyer, one of their most advanced, and a U.S. Navy electronic warfare plane. Nobody really expected this outcome. Sounds like we're talking movie stuff here. Like, what actually went down? Okay, so the Chinese ship, it was a Type 055 destroyer. They call it the Nanchang. The Nanchang. The Nanchang, yeah. And this thing... It's a monster of a ship. We're talking like 11,000 to 13,000 tons. Oh, okay. That's huge. Oh, yeah. Fully loaded. Yeah. 112 vertical launch system cells for missiles, 130 millimeter main gun. I mean, this thing's got it all. So, like, not something you want to mess around with? No, not at all. On the U.S. side, you've got an EA-18G Growler. That's an electronic warfare plane. It, its whole job is to disrupt enemy radar and communications. Basically, try to make the enemy blind and deaf electronically. So like a high-tech game of hide-and-seek. Yeah, you got it. So the Growler's doing its thing, you know, using its jamming systems to mess with the Nanchang's radar and communications. That's standard electronic warfare, right? Right. But here's where things get really interesting. The Nanchang, it had a secret weapon up its sleeve, an AI-powered radar system. Hold on, an AI radar system. That sounds like some crazy sci-fi stuff. I know, right? But this is a real deal. This AI system had turned the whole game on its head. All right, now i got to know more. How does this AI radar even work? What makes it so different? Okay, so imagine a radar system, right? But it's not just sending out signals and waiting for something to bounce back. This AI radar, it's analyzing all that incoming data in real time. It's constantly learning and adapting. Whoa, so it's not just detecting stuff, it's actually like thinking. Yeah, exactly. It's using what they call adaptive sensing. It means the radar is constantly tweaking and adjusting its settings to counter any jamming attempts. Like a chess player, you know, thinking ahead, countering their opponent's moves before they even make them. That's wild. So basically the growler is trying to jam the radar, but the AI is like, nope, not today. Pretty much. And it goes even deeper. This AI, it's using really advanced signal processing techniques, machine learning, to tell the difference between actual threats and all that electronic noise from the jamming signals. Imagine finding a needle in a haystack. This AI can do it. So the non-chain can basically see right through the growler's jamming. Exactly. Huge advantage right there, right? But wait, there's more. More. This AI radar, it doesn't just defend, it can actually fight back. It can deploy countermeasures to neutralize the electronic interference. Whoa, okay, this is getting serious. So what happened? Did the Nanchang just like shoot the growler down? Actually, no, this is where it gets even more interesting. They didn't fire a single shot. Actually, no, <laughs> this is where it gets even more interesting. They didn't fire a single shot. Seriously, what happened then? The Growler, they figured out pretty quick their jamming just wasn't working, so they had to back off. It was a total win for the Nanchang, but they didn't even have to use any actual weapons. That's insane. Yeah. So basically, AI won the day right. Yeah, you could say that. This whole thing shows how AI can totally change how naval warfare works. Like in this case, it shows a big shift towards electronic and cyber warfare being the deciding factor. So future battles at sea, they might not be about who has the bigger guns or the fastest missiles, but about who's got the smarter AI. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. Think about it. If a warship can use AI to basically blind and deafen the enemy, it's got this huge advantage without even firing a shot. Okay. That is both super cool and kind of scary, if I'm honest. Yeah. So what does this all mean for the U.S. and China? Like, what are the bigger implications here? Well, for China, this was a major PR win showed off their tech, proved they're serious about integrating AI into their military, sends a message about their power in the South China Sea. Makes sense. And mm -hmm. for the U.S., mm -hmm. this had to be a wake-up call, right? Oh, yeah, big time. I mean, the Growler, it was the top dog in electronic warfare. But against this AI system, it was totally outmatched. So now the U.S. knows they need to step up their game, figure out new electronic warfare strategies that can actually work against AI. So are we looking at, like, an AI arms race here? Is that what's coming next? It's possible. AI is advancing so fast in every area, it's only natural to think it'll keep changing how militaries operate. But that brings up another big question. Yeah, and what's that? If AI is going to be such a big part of future wars, how do we make sure it's used responsibly? Right, because that's a whole other can of worms. It is, and it's a question that needs way more attention. I mean, these AI systems, they're getting more and more complex, more independent. We need to really think about the ethics of using them in war. Like, what kind of ethical problems are we talking about? Well, one big one is accountability. 
Say an AI makes a decision that leads to civilian casualties or makes conflict worse, who's to blame? The person who programmed it, the military commander, yeah. the AI itself. Yeah, that's tough to figure out. And then there's hacking, right? What if someone messes with the AI, makes it do things it's not supposed to? Exactly. And then there's the issue of bias. You gotta remember, these AI systems learn from data. And data can reflect all kinds of human biases, right? So if an AI is trained on data that's biased against certain groups, there's a chance it could make biased decisions in a conflict. So it's not just about the tech, it's about how we use it. Exactly. We got to be super careful with how we develop and use AI in warfare. Human values, ethical considerations, that has to be the priority every step of the way. This whole Nan Chiang and Growler situation, it really makes you think we're in uncharted territory here. We are, for sure. It's like we're at a fork in the road. Mm -hmm. The decisions we make now about AI and warfare, they're going to have huge consequences down the line. It sounds like we need a way bigger conversation about all this. Not just military folks, but also ethicists, people making policy the public, everyone. Totally agree. This isn't just a military issue. It affects all of us. So where do we even go from here? Like, what can we actually do to make sure AI is used responsibly in warfare? Well, I think step one is we got to stop thinking about this as some far off sci-fi problem. This is happening right now. It's only going to get bigger from here on out. So we need to be taking this seriously right now, yeah. not just militaries, but everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. We need to start having these open, honest discussions about the ethics of using AI in war. Military leaders, tech people, the people making policy, the general public, everybody needs to be involved in this. It's almost like we need a whole new rule book, you know, like for this new age of warfare where AI is a major player. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. We need clear international rules, agreements about developing and using AI in war. Like maybe we need some kind of digital Geneva Convention, something that deals specifically with these autonomous weapon systems. That's a really interesting idea. I like that. What else can we do? Well, we got to put money into research, you know, figure out how to build safety mechanisms into these AI systems, make sure they're reliable, that they stay within the ethical boundaries we set, that they actually work the way we want them to. We can't just throw powerful AI onto the battlefield without thinking about what could go wrong, right? Right. It's like we have to build in safeguards from the very beginning, make sure human values are baked right into the code of these AI systems. Exactly. Things like making sure humans always have the final say, making sure how these systems make decisions is transparent, that we understand it, and figuring out who's responsible when something does go wrong. We got to have answers to these questions. Tough questions for sure. But yeah, we can't just ignore them and hope for the best. The longer we wait, the harder it's going to be to control how these technologies are developed and used. Man, this whole thing, the Nan Chang and the Growler, it's really eye-opening. Mm -hmm. Shows the huge challenges and the amazing potential of AI in warfare. Yeah, it's a wake up call for all of us. AI is going to keep changing how wars are fought. It's our responsibility to make sure that changes for the better, you know, for humanity, not against it. So for everyone listening out there, stay informed, stay engaged, and don't be afraid to ask those tough questions. That's the big takeaway here. Couldn't agree more. We're shaping the future of warfare right now. It's up to all